God has for us. Yes, for us. We, yes. we, we are grateful yes. tonight. Um, let's, let's give our musician, Deborah, a hand clap yes. for being here all week long and playing for us. We thank God for her and all those that have been involved in the music ministry this week. We are grateful. Uh, we thank God, first of all, for his mercy and for his grace. His loving kindness. Amen. Without him, none of us would be able to be here tonight. So we are grateful. Uh, it's a special night for me tonight because at least two or the three of the women of my lives are here tonight. Uh, the little one ain't here tonight. I'm a little upset about that, but uh, my lovely wife, Sister Belle, is here tonight. Amen. And you, you all just seen my daughter. She's going to be Amen. So we grateful. I guess I'll try to preach tonight since I got uh, some of the home team with me tonight. Amen. We we just want to say we are grateful to have this opportunity to come and preach and and do what the Lord has uh, called us to do. Amen. And Reverend Scott, we we love you and we love Mount Hermon Baptist Church, and we always will. Let Let's look at uh, just one verse tonight. Let's look at. Uh, Matthew 14, verse number 19. And let's, let's see what the Lord says in regards uh, to that text. It says in Matthew 14, in uh, verse number 19, when you have it, say amen. amen. It says that he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and he took the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed it, and he broke, and he gave the loaves to his disciples, and his disciples to the multitude. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to minister tonight around the subject of he's maximizing my life. I look at your neighbor real quick, I promise I won't ask you to do it too much, and say to your neighbor, he's maximizing my life. Amen. Yes, Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for your mercy and for your grace. We are grateful for what you have done thus far. Lord, we know it's by your power and by your might. We know it's by your grace. We know it's all because of you that we even have a life in our being. So God, tonight we, we, we've heard already how to maintain uh, during transition. We heard already that you expect us to give you another yes. yes and tonight, yes. Lord, we're ready for you to maximize our life. Yes. Father, we need you to preach to us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Say it one more time for the amen. Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, tonight our sermonic spotlight again shines on a familiar story in the Bible. We've heard of uh, this story in Vacation Bible School when we were younger. We heard about it in Sunday school as well. It's an account of Jesus feeding the multitude of people, uh, over 5,000 people, not counting women and men, and women and children with two little fish and five loaves of bread. And one of the things that blessed me about this story, uh, besides Jesus taking two fish and five loaves of bread and feeding 5,000 or more people, what really blessed me about this particular story is the timing that Jesus performed uh, this miracle. Yes. It's the timing that, 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 that caught my eye because when I look at this text, uh, I see that this miracle was out of what stands out to me is that at the time that this miracle took place in Jesus' life, out of the 34 miracles that took place in Jesus' life, this miracle, unlike any other miracle, this miracle takes place on a personal tragedy in the life of Jesus Christ. If you read verse number 10, you'll discover that Jesus' cousin, uh, John the Baptist, was beheaded by King Herod, and, and the news has reached Jesus at this particular time. Yeah. And right before the text commences, Jesus is grieving over the death of his cousin, John the Baptist. Yeah. So when you stop and think about the timing of this miracle, you, could, you would conclude that this miracle is linked to a personal tragedy in Jesus' life. 
this, unlike the other miracles of Jesus Christ, is linked to a moment of misery in the life of the master. Yes. And what makes this significant and impresses is that this miracle is born out of the misery in the life of Jesus Christ. In spite of him going through uh, one of the most difficult times in his life, right. is that he is able to put his personal pain on pause and still perform this miracle. I'm going to say it again. Amen. In spite of what he's going through in his personal life, he is able to put his personal pain on pause and still perform this miracle. And I'd like to just suggest to someone tonight that you should pat yourself on the back because you are still able to perform in spite of all the drama you've been through, in spite of all the chaos you have been through, in spite of working in dysfunctional places, in spite of raising children and grandchildren on your own. You ought to thank God because he has empowered you to still be able to perform. That's where we find Jesus tonight in this text. He's still able to produce. He is still able to perform a miracle while he is in misery himself. And what God does often, my brothers and sisters, is allow our ministry to be born out of our misery. He will often, come on somebody, use our pain as a platform for our ministry. God will take something that you're going through uh, and use that issue to be a launch pad for your ministry. And somebody asking a question tonight, God, why are you picking on me? Why do I have problems? the problem. Why do I have all this stuff going on and God is saying to you tonight, I am letting you go through this mayhem so you can do ministry. I wish there was somebody here tonight. And when I look at this text, in order for Jesus to perform this miracle, he has to maximize this meal. And the Bible says that Jesus takes two fish and five loaves. And if he is going to feed 5,000 people, not including the women and children, what Jesus has to do tonight in the text is he has to maximize the meal. And what I want to suggest tonight that what the Lord does to maximize the meal is, this, is what the Lord does to maximize our lives. Because contrary to popular belief, God wants to stretch you and God wants to maximize your life and my life. There is a better you inside of you. And oftentimes to get the better you out of you, God has to put you through something just to get the better that's out of you. In other words, God knows what he put inside of you. When God picked up some dust and formed it into the likeness of man and blew breath in it, God knew what he put inside of you. And God will not stop squeezing you and pressuring you until God gets out of you what he put in you. I wish somebody would talk to me. God has put you through some stuff just to get the better praise out of you. Regardless of how much you come to church to praise God, there's a better praise in you. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, I can do better than this. After all, God has been good to me. And it does not matter how good your praise is, God can get a better praise out of you. God can get a better worship out of you because God has put a better worship in you and in order to get the best praise and the best worship out of your life, watch this, God has to maximize your life. I remember when I was young that we were out and we were playing football and, and the ice cream man used to come by. And, and I would stop playing football because uh, inside the house I had one of those big old plastic piggy banks. Y'all remember them? Yeah. It, it wasn't the kind with the hole at the bottom where you take it out and you get the money out quick. But it was one of those old cheap banks that, that you had to turn it upside down and shake it. And then one of my siblings came to me and said, what are you doing? Man, I said, I'm trying to get this money out of the piggy bank simply because I'm trying to get that red, white, and blue bomb pop 
all of the ice cream man and, and the sibling said to me he said well how do you know that you got enough in there and what I said to him I said because I put it in there and I'm not going to stop shaking it until I get everything out of it that I put in I just stopped by tonight to tell you that God has put something in you and God will shake you God will rock you God will roll you until he gets out of you what he put in you is there somebody here you ought to give God some praise because there's a better you inside of you can I get a witness he said I'm the one to put it in the bank and God has put something in each of us can I get a witness somebody that he will not stop trying to get out of us there's a better praise in you there's a better witness in you come on somebody there's a better song in you there's a better preach in you there's a better walk in you and God is going to shake you until he gets out of you what he put in you can I get a witness and he's going not going to leave you alone until he gets all all that he puts in us somebody ought to say amen. amen well when I looked at the text though tonight I discovered that the Lord does several things in this uh, verse to maximize this meal when, when I looked closely I, I realized that no matter how many times I preached this text before that God always gives me something new when I look at it again and when I looked at the text, this one little verse, I realized that the Lord does several things to maximize this meal. Number one, in order for the Lord to maximize this meal, the first thing that the Lord had to do in verse number 19, the Bible says that he blessed the bread. Can you look at your neighbor and say again, he blessed the bread? In other words, number 19 tells us that, that the Lord can commanded them to sit down and he took the five loaves and fish and he blessed the bread and I put emphasis on the fact that he blessed the bread Jesus looks up to heaven gets God involved and he begins to bless the bread and according to Matthew 14 19 the text that we're in tonight we are not told what kind of bread it was but when you read John 6 Verse number nine, that text teaches us that the bread that Jesus blessed is barley bread. Can you look at your neighbor real quick and say it's barley bread? Can I get a witness? And I put emphasis on the fact that the bread was blessed was barley bread because barley bread was the cheapest grain there was. Can I get a witness, somebody? Barley bread was the kind of bread that poor folk ate. Barley bread was the kind of bread that was known as low budget bread. As a matter of fact, when people wanted to joke about how broke they were, they would say, man, I'm so poor, I don't have any barley bread to eat. Barley bread was cheap. Bread. Barley bread was low budget bread. Barley bread was bre bread that was barely edible. Barley bread was bread that was reserved for poor people and livestock. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 4 verse 26 to 28 when Solomon wanted to feed his 40,000 horses, guess what Solomon gave him? He gave him some barley bread. You know why he gave him some barley bread? Because if nobody wanted barley bread Barley bread was cheap. Barley bread didn't have any value. Barley bread was a low budget bread. And barley bread was considered to be worthless bread. Somebody ain't talking to me. But the Lord in the text, he takes something that is worthless. He takes something that is low budget. And somebody should get happy right now. He takes something that is cheap. He takes something that is a poor quality. And the text says he looks up to heaven and he blesses bad bread. Y'all that, come on somebody. Y'all that been good all your life. You ain't going to understand this. You ain't going to shout. But tonight I'm talking to somebody in this place who can look back over their life and remember there were times when the grains of your life were of low quality. There was times when you didn't have no value. 
you there was times when folks looked at you and thought you were cheap and good for nothing and I'm talking to somebody tonight who can look back where the Lord has brought them from he took some barley bread he took some barley bread some cheap bread some low budget bread some bread that had poor quality he, he took some bread that nobody else wanted come on somebody but he, he, he took some bread and, and you can look back over your life before you get so sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and you can give God praise that God still blesses bad bread somebody ought to give you some praise because God still blesses bad bread I'm glad about that I'm glad that the God I serve he just don't bless good stuff but God still blesses bad bread some of us got little thug kids and I'm so glad that God still blesses bad bread some of us got children that ain't acting right cutting up cutting her up but I'm so glad that he still blesses bad bread is there somebody here tonight Night, that you can say, I'm so glad that the God I serve, He'll look past my thoughts and see my needs. He'll take something bad and He'll look up to heaven. I'm glad about it tonight because I was bad brain. The brain to my life were no good. It was the cheapest, lowest quality stuff that you would ever want to see. But thanks be to God that He took some bad brain, that He looked up to heaven. And it blessed it. Is there somebody here tonight? Glad that the Lord still blesses bad bread. You ought to thank God tonight that he still blesses bad bread. If you look at verse number 19, the Bible says he looks to heaven, takes something that's almost worthless, and he blesses it. And when you look at that word bless in the Greek, it's eulogeho. And that word stands for eulogy. In other words, what the Lord did, he took some bad bread and eulogized it. Can I get a witness? And what I'm trying to tell you is God took something that had a bad name. God took something that had a bad reputation and he took some bad bread. I wish I had somebody up in here tonight. And he eulogized some bad bread. In other words, God began to speak well of the bread. He looks up to heaven and he says something good about bad bread about sheep about worthless bread about bread that's fit for animals that no one wants to eat and you ain't gotta never say nothing good about me can I get a witness I just want to let you know tonight that you ain't gotta say nothing about me cause I got a God that sits in heaven that will take me at my worst and say something good about me look at him in the text he took some bad bread he held it up to his father and he blessed it so God, God the Lord had to take this bread and he had to, to, to take the bread and bless it some bad bread the Lord had to take some bad bread and, and somebody can relate to me tonight because somebody said you was bad somebody said you'll never amount to anything somebody said you ain't gonna make it but God takes that bad bread and he picks it up and he eulogizes it he speaks well of it to his father I'm ready to lose my mind up here because I'm glad that he still takes some stuff that everybody thinks is bad and he takes it come on somebody and he'll pick it up and he'll get his father involved and he'll bless the bread and you know what I find out you know you can't get mad at the bread for being blessed because the bread did not ask to be blessed that there's nowhere in the text that the bread asked to be blessed in verse number 19 the Bible says Jesus took the bread all the bread did was just be in the right place at the right time can I get a witness somebody and the truth is that none of us come on somebody deserve to be blessed like we are but thanks 
speak to God. He chose us anyhow because he did not ask, come on somebody, to be blessed. Come on, bread does not have to justify being blessed. You ain't got to justify you being blessed to nobody. You just say I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. You just say I don't know how I got it. I didn't deserve it, but the Lord blessed me because he wanted to bless me because he chose to bless me. I ain't got to make up no excuses for being blessed by God. I'm just blessed because God said I'm blessed. Is there somebody here that's just blessed because God says you're blessed? He, he, he blesses the bread. He eulogizes the bread and he gives the bread favor. And don't you be fooled about favor of God because favor is better than money. Can I get a witness about it? Favor will take you farther than the key, than the car that's in your driveway. Favor will open up more doors for you than the keys that are in your pocket. Favor will make uh, your background or felony disappear on your record. Favor will give you a job that you really don't have the background for. Favor will cover up a felony. Favor will give you, even though you got a GED, favor will give you a job and make you the CEO. And I'm so glad that God takes some bad stuff and he puts his favor on it and he blesses some bad bread. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, God blesses bad bread. Can I get a witness? So in order, in order for God, for the Lord to maximize this meal, the first thing he had to do was he had to bless the bread. Something that nobody else wanted. Something that folks gave up on. Something that they said would never add to nothing. The Lord takes bad, worthless stuff. Somebody should shout right now. And he holds it up to God and he blesses it. So in order to maximize this meal, the Lord had to bless the bread. But verse number 19 says that the way that the Lord was going to maximize the meal was not only to bless the bread, but also to break the bread. Because the Bible says that the same bread he blessed is the same bread he turned around and broke. Can I get a witness about it? Watch this. The blessing on the bread could not stop the breaking of the bread. Can I say that again? I said the blessing that he put on the bread, it could not stop the breaking of the bread. Somebody ain't talking to me. As blessed as the bread was, he still took it upon himself to break what he just blessed. Now if the Lord bless the bread, watch this, and then turn around and broke the bread, it means that the bread was already blessed when he went into the breaking process. Can I say it again? I say now if the Lord blessed the bread and then he broke the bread, then that simply means that the bread was already blessed. Somebody ought to talk to me tonight. It was already blessed before it went into the breaking process. Y'all have missed it. I'm going to say it again. It means means that if the Lord already blessed the bread, Reverend, and then he break the bread, it simply means that the bread was already blessed before it went in the breaking process. That, that explains a few things. That, that explains why even though you've been broken, you still got joy. That, that explains that even though your life is being broken, you still can come into the church and praise God. It explains why you haven't lost your mind and snap, crackle, and pop. It explains why you're able to keep your peace because he blessed you before he broke you. Can I get a witness? He, he blessed the bread before he broke the bread. So it simply means that before the bread went into the breaking process, it was already blessed. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, you can break me if you want to. But I've already been blessed by God. Can I get a witness to somebody? I said, you can break me if you want to. But I already got the Lord's favor all over me. I've already been blessed by God. It may hurt a little bit, but I got the blessing of God all my life. Can I get a witness to somebody? So the text says, after he break the bread. Watch this. The text says, and break. And that verb and break in the Greek is what we call an arrow stance. And it describes an action that takes place at a specific time. I'm going to say it again. I said that word and he 
break, come on somebody, and break is what we call an arrow stance in the Greek. And it describes an action that takes place at a specific time. You missed it again. I'm so glad that the Lord knew the exact time to break me. Y'all are you talking to me? Because if he did not know the right time to break me, I could have never withstood the break. Come on somebody. But I'm so glad that the Lord knew when he needed to break me. I'm so glad it was after I got saved, after I joined the church, after I got a word in me. I'm so glad that the Lord didn't break me arbitrarily, but the Lord knew exactly what time to put his hands on me. Is there somebody in the church? I'm so glad he waited till I was strong enough. I'm so glad he waited till I was mature enough. I'm so glad he waited until I had his blessing on my life before he broke me because I would have never made it if the Lord didn't do it at the right time. Can I get a witness? Somebody's saying God's not fair. But one of the things that we got to understand that God is fair. God, God knows exactly what he's doing. Now you notice in the text, it says he broke the bread. It says he broke the bread. There were 5,000 people there, not including the women and the children. And out of all the people there, the Bible says he broke the bread. If anybody, come on somebody, breaks me, I want the Lord to break me. Why? Because if the Lord breaks me, he got to put his hands on me. Somebody ain't talking to me. I said, if anybody breaks me, I want the Lord to break me because there was no knives and all that at that time. So in order to break something, you had to put your hands on it. And I just stopped by to tell you that whenever you allow the Lord to put his hands on you, you're going to come out like pure gold. The Bible said he broke the bread. Can I get a witness? And you ought to thank God that he reached down from heaven and he decided to put his hands on you. Does anybody know that when you get in the hands of God, he's able to do more and abundantly and exceedingly than you can think of or imagine the Lord put his hands on you. He broke you. But watch this. That there, there was several uh, hands in order for him to put his hands on the bread. Watch this, y'all. It means that he had to wait until other people took their hands off the bread. Come on. Can, can I say that again? I said in order for him to put his hands on the bread, he had to wait for other people to take their hands off the bread. Somebody ain't talking to him. He, he did not bring the bread to the feast. Uh, several hands had touched the bread before Jesus did. Number one, the boy's mother's hands first touched the bread. And after the lady touched the bread, come on somebody, the lad touched the bread. And after the lad touched the bread, watch this, the leaders touched the bread. But after the leaders touched the bread, the Lord touched the bread. But when the bread was in the lady's hands, it was only enough for one. When the bread was in the lad's hands, it was only enough for one. When the bread was in that leader's hands, it was only enough for one. But at the same time, with the same bread when it got in the Lord's hands. Come on somebody because whatever the Lord touches he maximizes and in the lady's hands it was only good for one. In the lad's hands it was only good for one. In the leader's hands Reverend it was only good for one but when they put it in the Lord's hands somebody ought to say I want to be in the Lord's hands. I want him to maximize my life. You ought to give the Lord some praise tonight for touching your life, for touching your family, for touching your home, for touching your heart. Can I get a witness? So in order to maximize this meal, the Lord first had to bless the bread. Then the Lord had to break the bread. But the next thing the Lord had to do, he had to bestow the bread. That means the Lord had to give the bread away. In other words, the Bible tells us that the Lord gave the bread to his disciples. 
And this suggests that the reason why Jesus takes the time, watch this, y'all, to break the bread is because somebody needs to benefit from the broken pieces. Because the Bible says that after he broke the bread, he distributed to the people and there still was some bread left over. I wish y'all would come on and go with me. There was 5,000 women and men, come on somebody, not including women and children, and everybody was hungry. And Jesus designated the broken bread to benefit those who were there. So Jesus broke the bread because somebody needed to be blessed. And whenever God breaks your life, He's not breaking it so that you can die, but he's breaking it so that you can perform. Whenever God takes your life and breaks it, he's not breaking it just for you, but he's breaking it for the benefit of somebody else. I wish somebody would talk to me. The bread could not stay in the lunch bag because too many people were depending on the bread. Bread cannot stay in the possession of the little boy because too many people were depending on the bread. The questioning breaking process. Why Lord, why are you breaking me? Why are you breaking me on my job? Why are you breaking me in my home? Why are you breaking me in our finances? Why are you breaking me in my career? Why are you breaking me in my aspiration? And God says to you that somebody in your life that needs to benefit from your broken peace. Let me stop and slow down just for a minute. God is saying that he's allowing you to go through what you're going through. Because there's somebody that's near you. There's somebody on your job. There's one of your close friends. There's somebody in your family that's watching you be broken by God. Come on, somebody. And what he is doing, he's allowing you to go through this broken process because somebody else needs to benefit off your broken pieces. Can I get a witness? Because if they look at your life and say, if Charlize can go through it, and Charlize can still hold on to her faith, and Charlize still can come in and praise the God that she serves, then I can do it myself. And I stopped by to tell somebody tonight, if you're in a breaking process, you ought to thank God because God is getting ready for you to be a blessing for somebody else. And that's what this thing is all about. It's not about you, but it's about God using you to benefit somebody else, to be a blessing to somebody else. Is there somebody here that can say to God come on and break me I got a neighbor that's going through and if I just hold on to God's unchanging hands then my broken pieces might be able to help her make it through is there somebody here today come on give me your best shot break me if you want to because I realize that there's somebody will benefit from my broken pieces and you look at your broken life but you're still making it you're still praising God you're still waking up every morning maybe rough but you're still making it can I get a witness still recognize that there is a God that sits high and looks low and you gotta stop asking God why am I being broken because out of your brokenness God perfects praise